so welcome to our eighth episode of Q Formation, and today we brought another special Q Formation because this is a collaboration with April from Cooler Power. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure you guys know who April is, but she also creates DIY videos where she transforms these unexpected things into something very cool and fashionable. Yeah, and it's really amazing to see how she deconstructs an existing garment and creates something so creative. We have been watching her videos since we were in LA, so we're super happy to do this collaboration with her, and we hope you guys enjoy this video. For this episode, we're gonna deconstruct our old shirt into an asymmetrical ruffle top which we have been seeing quite often on social media. So you guys know the drill, the final look will be at the end of the video so make sure to stick around until the end and also make sure to check out April's channel to see her version of the transformation and let's get this baby started! Chop chop! First, I separated the collar from the shirt using a seam ripper. Then I drew somewhat a circular shape mimicking the slit for the shoulder. Here is a more detailed view of the shape. The best way to accurately draw the slit in a way that you want it to look like in the end is to draw the shape while you're actually wearing the shirt. Once that's done, I separated the collar stand from the front shoulder where the slit hollow is going to take place plus 2 inch more. In other words, unseam additional 2 inch more from the original slit shape that you have just drew. The two additional space is where the ruffles will be inserted later on. We'll talk about this more in detail later. And make sure to do the exact same thing for the back shoulder by separating the collar stand from the back shoulder where the slit hollow is going to take place plus 2 inch extra. Then cut off the shape. Make sure to cut the slit for both front and back shoulder. Now measure the circumference of the circular slit that you have just cut from the shoulder. Let's call the front shoulder slit measurement a star and the back shoulder slit measurement a heart. Next, we are going to create front and back shoulder slit flare pattern by first drawing a trapezoid shape according to the measurement shown on the screen. Let's work with the front shoulder slit flare pattern first. We are going to do the famous slash and spread method. First, simply draw a random vertical line like so and cut it from the bottom to the top motion and make sure the top tip is still attached. In other words, don't cut it all the way through. Then spread them as much as you want and tape it on a clean piece of paper. The trick here is that the more you spread, the more flares you are going to end up with. Connect the hem by freehand drawing and smoothen out any sharp corners. Add seam allowances accordingly and cut one. The methods for creating the back shoulder slit flare patterns are exactly the same as the previous front pattern. For the back flare pattern, cut one as well. Place a front and back shoulder slit flare facing correct sides together and sew 5 inch long side together in half an inch. Next, clean finish the hem and the 2 inch long sides raw edges by turning quarter inch twice and stitching it in place. Then place a flare on top of the shirt's shoulder slit and secure them in place with a stitch. To clean finish the shoulder slit, we are going to create a bias strip. To do so, draw a rectangle with length that is equivalent to the addition of star and heart measurement and a width that is equivalent to 1 inch. Add quarter inch seam allowances on each end and cut one on bias. We are going to place the correct side of the bias strip facing the correct side of the front and back flares and sew them together in quarter inch. Then create small clips with a scissor to ease the tension. This will help you work with the fabrics more easier. Next, fold the bias strip twice like so and secure it in place with a stitch. Ta-da! Remember the collar band that we had to unseam to cut the shoulder slit? We're going to simply sew them all back together but make sure to sandwich the 2 inch wide flares between the collar band as well and sew them all together. Basically, what we're doing here is closing all the bottom of the collar sand. Once you're done, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now let's jump into the neck flares. First, we're going to measure the circumference of the neck where the flares are going to be inserted. For the shirt that I'm working with, I'm going to have flares that covers 14 and 5 8 inch of the front neck and another 14 and 5 8 inch of the back neck. Let's call the front neck with a triangle and back neck with a circle. To draw the front and back neck flares, draw a trapezoid shape according to the measurement shown on the screen. Let's first work with the front neck flare pattern. First, draw a random vertical lines like so and cut it from the bottom to the top motion and make sure the top tip is still attached. Then spread them as much as you want and tape it on a clean piece of paper. Connect the hem by freehand drawing and smoothen out any sharp corner. Add seam allowances accordingly and cut one. The methods for creating the back neck flare patterns are exactly the same as the previous front neck flare pattern. 
cut one. Place the front and back neck flares facing the correct size together and sew the 2 inch long sides together in half an inch. Next, clean finish the hem and the 6.5 inch long sides raw edges by turning quarter inch twice and stitching it in place. Then shove the flares between the front and back neck collar stand so that it is sandwiched between the collar stands like so. And then we're going to close the collar stand by stitching everything together. You should end up with something that looks like this. This is an optional step, but to reduce the width of the cuff, first separate the cuff from the sleeve. Then flip over the cuff so that the wrong side is facing out and fold the cuff lengthwise like so. Fold it in half and find the center point, and from that point, draw a straight line that is equivalent to half the measurement of how much you want to reduce the cuff's width. For example, for me, I want to reduce the cuff width by 2.5 inch, which means I have to draw a line that is 1.25 inch away from the center line. Cut off the excess seam allowances, flip the cuff back to the correct side, and now we're going to sew the cuff back to the sleeves. Don't worry about the sleeves no longer matching the width of the cuff because we're going to create a single tuck by literally folding the excess sleeves in such manner until it fits the width of the cuff. Here is a more detailed view. Then you're done! you guys enjoyed this video and make sure to check out april's channel to see her version of this diy and we'll see you guys in our next video bye bye, bye.